It's our first day of diving on the Australasia. There's lots of preparation, of course. And finally, we're on our way, leaving from Bailey's Harbor. There's still a lot of swells from the strong winds of the past few days. We're going to tie up behind him, I take it. Yeah, that's the plan. First. First call. Diver Paul answers a few the questions crew, from people on shore at Whitefish Dunes State Park. And the crew said they were going to finish lunch before they went to put the fire out. They ultimately got ashore in a yawl and then went to a bar. And then the captain went We'll have more of that story of how the ship wrecked and what happened afterwards tomorrow and in subsequent days. The divers get suited up. Nice pink gloves you have there. <laughs> I am a girl, by the way. <laughs> That's right. Here's Keith Memerton, one of the project leaders from the Wisconsin Historical Society, describing what we are doing today. Well, today we went out to the site to conduct an orientation dive since uh, none of our team members had ever been on the site before. Uh, so we got kind of a late start because there was a, a pretty good swell coming out of the south be, because of the strong winds that have been blowing for the last few days and uh, made the site conditions quite challenging. Our visibility was a little less than five feet. Uh, we had uh, water temp at just over 40 degrees. 43 degrees to be precise, as Krista points out on her dive computer here. And quite a bit of surge on the bottom. Uh, so I took a, 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 an eighth inch gu nylon guideline and ran it around the site and actually tied it to different site components and large structures so people could literally follow the guideline around the site and actually find and explore the different parts of the wreck and discover what the layout was like. Yeah, we had a, a pretty good swell coming over the top of the site, uh, probably you know four or five feet on the surface, but it does create uh, an effect called surge on the bottom. Even though we're in 20 feet of water, it really creates a back and forth movement on the bottom where you're literally getting pushed back and forth uh, about three or four feet at a time. And, and with reduced visibility, it really created a challenge and really kind of made you get seasick on the bottom even though you're in 20 feet of water. Meverden tells us what we might expect tomorrow. Well, the conditions are site, on site are looking much better tomorrow than they were today because the swell has already laid down pretty significantly. Uh, the wind's supposed to be out of the west, so we should have uh, very minimal swell, a lot better visibility, and we're also hoping that the water temperature increases a bit because it's kind of ironic if you look at a, a map of the surface temps of Lake Michigan. It's pretty much 60 degrees across the entire surface of the lake except where we are, which is 40 degrees. Really cold, a lot of surge, bad visibility. It's very cold. <laughs> That's what I hear. Uh, we went in search of the bow. It looks like the bow is sanded in, so uh, we may only have the second latter half of the vessel to map, and then we'll have to wait for another year for the sand to move the, the bow away. But we should get a good chunk of it done. It's cold down there. <laughs> <laughs> when the day is done, it's time to refill the tanks and review what the divers saw down below and plan for tomorrow. I'll switch them over once yeah. you have them on. Tomorrow we'll tell you a little bit more about the, the structures down below and a little bit about how the vessel sank. Come back for our next posting tomorrow.